Hi, it's Thea. Today is part one of a three-part mini-series where I'm going to use Crayola, crayons, and colored pencils to color this image from my coloring book, Everyday Magic. I'm very excited about today because I'm only going to be using Crayola crayons to color skin tone on the picture that I just showed you. The setup's a little different, but they're still the good old Crayola crayons that we used when we were kids. I started out with the lightest light skin tone and in this set it's apricot and I started out with a very light touch on purpose because I figured if anything was going to be horrible <laughs> with blendability and layering it's going to be Crayola crayons which I would say is the, the waxiest thing on the earth. So. I very lightly covered, I can't say the whole area of her face because there are some areas that I'm going to leave white because I'm gonna believe it or not go over them with yellow and pink and blue. So it should be interesting. So for now, these areas are getting covered with apricot and then I move up to the next, what I would consider light skin tone, which is peach. This is still apricot. They've changed a lot of names in the set. I don't remember purple pizzazz when I was a kid. Um, later on in the picture, I was looking for just a pure red and I kept finding things like wild strawberry and um, pink flamingo. I don't remember those. And in all fairness, there's a lot more crayons than when I was coloring as a kid. I'm going to speed this up for now because I'm just finishing up the areas that I'm going to go over with that very light apricot color. Oh, by the way, they don't have a sharpener in the back anymore. You know, that would hold the shavings. They have this weird little green sharpener in the shape of a character named Tip. Um, I don't like, well, I'm just gonna comment on the ability of the, sharp, of, of the sharpening ability. It's not good. I don't think there's an actual blade in, in, in there and the pencil, well, I should say the crayon points really Let's just say it's not worth it. Okay, so here I moved up a slight shade to peach to give Zodiac Girl a little bit more depth and I it's such a subtle difference at this point, so I'm gonna speed it up again. And once again, I'm doing this in very light layers so I don't instantly burnish because I think that if you push hard with the crayon, you're either going to ruin the whole thing by burnish, burnishing instantly and you're not going to be able to do anything else or you have to literally know where to put everything right from the get-go. And I work a little bit more slowly than that. And I think it would look a little bit more, more shiny. Uh, it would feel different. And I don't know if you remember this, but that that strange texture when the Crayola crayon really burnishes, you can scrape it off with your fingernail. I'm gonna speed this up too. Oh, wait a minute, did I just move on to orange? I think I did, let me check. Yes, I did. And I hate to say it, but the color is an orange, it's macaroni and cheese. And not that that's a horrible name, but I wanted to make her glamorous and even saying that, and yes, I know these are geared to kids, but macaroni and cheese is a great glowy orange color. So I used it quite a bit. So I'm going over a lot of the areas that I just cov covered with those two lighter fruity colors, the apricot and the peach. And now I'm doing the perimeter of her face and some of the areas that are casting a little bit of a shadow. 
as you're looking at the page, the right side will end up more in a shadow. It's a very subtle shadow because she's supposed to be under the moon, which you can see in the top left corner, which I'll show you later, of, of the image. Again, I'm, I'm going very lightly because I don't want to ruin my opportunity for going over anymore and giving it that final gloss. I kind of actually did that with her lips. I'll show you later. I, I made a mistake and I kind of went over the lips several times and it never, they, they never got to how I wanted them to look, but they, they ended up decent for a set of Crayolas. Oh, let me see what color this is. This is Tickle Me Pink. And I'm going back and forth between several very warm shades. And Tickle Me Pink is a nice warm pink color. And I wanted her face to look like she was very healthy and glowy and possibly a little sun-kissed or maybe flushed a little bit. I'm gonna make the flowers later very pink and the necklace around her neck a ruby color. So. I wanted all those things to kind of be highlighted in her face. I used a lot of the same colors in the flowers as I did on her lips and on her cheeks. I do go back and forth to peach and apricot. Oh, this color. <laughs> this is the color I think is called Piggy pink and it's the lightest pink you can imagine what I'm doing on her face is forming shadows around what I would perceive as the area that would sort of plump up a little bit when she would smile because it seems to me that she has like a very subtle smile Oh, here's that light yellow. Is that just plain old yellow? I think it's either yellow or canary. And, <coughs> excuse me, I used that over there because you can't see it right now, but there's a moon in the left-hand corner of the image. And I thought that the moon would be casting a nice glow on her face. I'm going to speed it up a little again. Now, this doesn't look that great right now. And... You know what, even after all this time I've been doing this, there are moments in almost every picture that I look at it and say, oh no, <laughs> what have I done? But it's, at this point I kind of have to trust in the process because there will be a lot of blending. And although in this case it's kind of an experiment, yes, it'll be blending, but I'm gonna be using a Prismacolor colorless blender on top of Crayola kids crayons. So I am really interested to see what this turns out like. At this point, I'm using the apricot, the peach, the macaroni and cheese, wild tangerine, a lot of different colors. Whoop, that's a brush. It's actually a, a primer brush, a three inch brush that I use to dust off all the fallout because with crayons there is fallout like you've never experienced with colored pencils. Oop, back to the pinks. I used several different pinks. Tickle Me Pink, Pink Sherbert. Um, there was another one I used, oh, Carnation Pink. I used a lot and also Salmon. And what I'm doing at this point is adding another level or and layer where she would be in the shadows. Now, here's the first time I added a, a blue or well, it's, it's not even a, it's, this is periwinkle. That was always one of my favorite colors in this set. Even as a kid, I was so glad to see that it still existed. So very lightly and very gently, I added periwinkle to any of the areas that I thought would be slightly shadowed by either the flowers or her hair. I put the shadows in her ear because 
our ears are complicated, just like our hands, everything. Human anatomy is crazy complicated. I'm gonna speed this up too. At this point in the video, I started to go back and forth between the warms and the cools. Now you can see I'm using the periwinkle on her neck now. And there was another darker, let me see, I left, I left them all out. It's not making it much easier though. Hold on, be right back. Oh, the other color was Purple Mountain's Majesty. That is either a new one or it's just a new name, but I love those two colors together. They're perfect shadow colors. Oh, and here are some all um, lavendery, also purple colors that I used in the shadow areas too. Once again, another point where it just looks so bad. It looks like she has a bruise and a black eye and she just looks a little weird. But if you kind of squint and look, you can see it. She doesn't. her face doesn't look flat anymore. It's starting to look like there's ups and downs on her face. You can see where her nose sticks out a little farther, where the dark colors are, they recede. So they look a little further back. Oh, there's the periwinkle again. Now, in this case, I'm using a darker pink and the blues as shadows and not really highlights, but areas that are recessed. And even under her eyes, I didn't want it to look like she was tired or, you know, a black eye of any sort. But um, all these layers, uh, hopefully, I had my fingers crossed so hard at this point, I was trying to add the different... color effects in the skin that would eventually when blended look like actual skin right now it looks like a little crazy but you know what I'm thinking maybe I'll show you a photograph where the Sun is shining on someone's face if you if you take a quick look you would say oh their skin is peach or their skin is brown or their or whatever color you would see the initial the initial glance but when you really start to look inch after inch and area after area you realize the face has every color in it it's almost amazing and I'm not even talking about just freckles even if the skin looks relatively porcelain it's amazing how how many colors there are. Let me see if I can find an image for you that'll, that'll depict that. Here's a good example. You can see on the right side of her face, there's like orange. The left side is a bright yellow. You can see browns and blues and pinks and peaches. It's amazing. And it's another good reason to use a reference picture. You can look really closely and you can take your time and put down those image, put down those colors that you see in the picture. You can literally hold up the pencil or the crayon and almost match it to the color on the reference picture. At this point, there's a lot of very, very light layers. I don't think I could have done it if I pushed any harder than I did. So I go back and forth between, like I said before, the warms and the cools. And what I'm trying to do now is to get the shapes within the face. Under our lips, sometimes there's that little, not a cleft in our chin, but there's that little area that is an indentation before our chin sticks out at the bottom and even around our lips there's 
a little area that stands out that's not lip colored, but a lot of makeup artists highlight that area because it makes the lips look more natural, actually. And there's, the, there's that little indentation below the nose and above the lips. And that needed to be colored also. Oh, the mistake I made on those lips, I put, I put that very light pink down first and I instantly burnished it and had a hard time pretty much the rest of the time trying to make the lips look decent. I eventually ended up using some terpenoid and even that didn't completely remove the waxiness of that of that very light piggy pink crayon. Here I was using lavender uh, strawberry pink. Was it strawberry pink? Pink sherbet. And in all fairness, some of them did stay more than others. Ooh, I even added some orange because I wanted the lips not to look just like a flat surface. I wanted them because our lips have lines. There's different areas that are different colors. Oh, interesting thing about lips. Supposedly your best lip color and the color that'll look best on you, if you pull your lip down a little tiny bit, the color that's right on the right on the inside of your lip is your perfect color. So you can get a lip liner in that color and uh, that's supposed to be the best for your skin tone. Also, some people are cool, some people are warm and that plays into it too. So I wanted, I didn't want it to look like she had tons of makeup on although it kind of ended up that way because the crayons were hard to work with in more constricted areas like the lips and the eyes. So there I go, trying to blend it and soften it with the terpenoid, which is odorless mineral spirits. And it did work. You can see that it, it softened it up, but it, the, the lips were still not looking like I wanted them to look. I went back and forth several times. Oh, now I started to use the lightest brown that I could find. What was that one? It was a good color. It was kind of uh, a very soft, oh, here it is. It was tumbleweed. And although it was still a light brown, it was, it's, the, the colors that I'm using are getting darker and darker. So. If someone was gonna ask me how I would describe drawing or coloring a face, I would definitely do the lightest colors first and work my way up to the darker colors and the shadows. I would also say don't really use any sharp lines. I didn't really well, I guess maybe a little for her eyeliner a little bit later, but I tried to blend everything in and I get, I didn't really envision her with tons of wrinkles on her face. She's a relatively young person in this picture. So yes, you do see the lines on the outside of the areas because it's from a coloring book. And probably if I was doing this image, it, the, 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 the lines wouldn't be so distinct, meaning if I was just drawing a portrait, either with colored pencils or <laughs> I've never really done one in crayon for anything else but fun, but everything sort of blends into everything else. I mean, if you have a birthmark that's got defined borders. If you have eyeliner on, that's got defined borders. Your lips, you put lip liner on, defined borders. Uh, most other things, meaning the colors on, on the face, as you can see here. Well, let me, for example, use the left side of the cheek. You can see the, the apple of the cheek is the lightest. And there's no real 
lines there to show you that it's just sort of indication so you have to very carefully color the areas darker that you want to recede a little bit more and as I do this you can see that I'm choosing darker and darker colors I went from macaroni and cheese to wild tangerine to orange and I used all of them within that image I, I used also yellow orange um, but I think if you use them in the beginning and tried to do it reverse, meaning using the darker colors, the darker, the darker colors first and then the lighter colors. I don't know how that would turn out. I would have to, I would have to do an experiment for that. And I've always done it lighter to darker. I used a little blue in her eyebrows. I didn't want to use black. Like I didn't want it to be too harsh because she is fairly light and I wanted the colors to match her hair. I'm going to eventually, in another video, make her hair chestnut. So I wanted the eyebrows to be slightly darker than the hair. So I used the blue to darken it up and not make it too intensely black. In the next video, I'll be doing her hair, and in the video after that, I'll be doing the flowers, the background, and the necklace. Um, there's some interesting things in those videos, too, uh, different methods that I sort of discovered along the way as I used crayons as a medium. And you know what? It's funny. Oh, there's that piggy pink again which I have a love-hate thing with now because, gosh, it ruined those lips, but, oh, what's that color? Oh, that's Purple Mountain's Majesty. A great shadow color for light skin. Oh, and the other thing is you kind of don't want to be aware that there's a shadow. You, you don't want it to look like you were trying to make it look like there's a shadow. Oh, here's some uh, periwinkle blue on her forehead, over her brows. Here's the pink going down her cheek. Apricot again. Sort of forming the apple of the cheek on this side of her face. Around these areas, it's so subtle because we're so used to looking at these on each other's faces every day that we don't even realize that these um, areas exist. M meaning what area would stand out, what area would recede. So even if it's not exactly the picture that you're working on, which it will rarely be, pick a picture, pick a reference image and just kind of go from there. This one is kind of slightly off at an angle. That would be one thing that I would recommend. Uh, try to try to choose an image that's looking in the same direction, M meaning the person in, in the image is looking in the same direction. It's interesting because this still looks kind of weird at this point. Oh, <laughs> I did the same thing that I did, the, did with the lips to the eyes. I wanted to make a sort of a lightish ring around the pupil and it was a little bit too light and I made her look a little, maybe a little possessed for a minute there. And I didn't use all the same things on one side as I did on the other side, meaning the right eye is a little bit different than the left eye. So just because I put something with purple on one area doesn't mean it's automatically going to go on, on the other side. I'm adding some pinks. I think that's carnation pink to make her look once again flushed.
and healthy and young. I kept kind of trying to spin the crayons just like I would spin a colored pencil, but the colored pencils obviously hold a point much longer than the crayons. So I kept trying to take advantage of, of either spinning it if I had to do like a smaller area or using the flat of the crayon. Now I did end up sharpening and I, what did I use? Oh, I used a cum sharpener because that, that little green guy just didn't cut it. Now you can see from going back and forth at this point, her nose is lighter. The apples of her cheeks are lighter. Right beneath her brow, there's a little area up right above the pupil of the eye that is lighter. Those are usually either concave areas or rounded areas and a reflection or the light would bounce there or sit there. I think that as women, we're always so tempted when we color to make the apple of the cheek red because we think that's where we should put blush. And if it's too dark, it alters the way the picture looks and feels. In, if, if we do that to our, our face too, if the, if the blush is too dark right on the apple of our cheek, it sort of changes the shape of our face. So right about now, I was liking the way it looked. Oh, see that area around the nostril? The tip of her nose is a little bit darker and the area on around the outside of the no nostril is a little bit darker. And then right where the nostril would sort of have a little peak, I left it lighter so it looked like a separate part of her nose. Oop, now I'm using the greens for her eyes to make her look a little bit less scary. And uh, I never really got the green that I wanted either. So that's another little tip for crayons. Don't, don't push too hard with the lighter colors first. you're not going to get a whole lot of detail. Oh, another trick for eyes is that right now the white part of her eyes is glowing white. Now I didn't want to add any bloodshot veins or anything, although that does exist. I, I'm kind of keeping it more like a, a bit of a cartoon character here. I did want her to have some semblance of feeling like a real person. So you can see that I used a shadow color. In this case, it was periwinkle and I went over the white and the iris of her, of her eye to make the white less glowing white. Now I'm giving her some black eyeliner. It was a little hard to do because I had gone over it with several layers. And now for the part that I could not wait for, that's the Prismacolor Colorless Blender. And I had my fingers crossed and I just started to blend all of her skin tone. And right off the bat, it was, it was okay. Well, no, right off the bat, I got a little scared because all, not all, but a lot of the wax started to come off. Meaning if I put too many layers, you could actually see the wax just peeling right off. And I said to myself, well, that may have been a waste of time. So you can see me brushing it away. But on her face, I really, really took my time. So there was not a whole lot of fallout at all. The layers were so soft and so light that they just blended really nicely. Not as nicely as a polychromos or a Prismacolor pencil, but you can see it's really working well. It's almost kind of doing that Venetian plaster kind of thing. Um, in Italy, they, their, their homes and the walls in the homes are beautiful. 
because they use layer after layer after layer of very thin, thin plaster. And it's infused with ground up marble or other elements. And it eventually, um, the, the air kind of softens it and changes it. And it just gets more beautiful as it ages. So I always think about that when I'm putting layers down that the, the thinner, the better. It will look more luminous. And that's exactly what happened here, even with crayons. So I was really excited about this at this point. And uh, I actually couldn't wait to put this video out because I, I just couldn't believe that it could be done. So I have a new appreciation for crayons and I kind of want to do more things now to see what other results I could get from using crayons. You can see how the one side of her face looks so much smoother. And uh, I thought that I would also use Turpinoid, but I kind of wanted just to see what it would look like because I started with the, with the pencil just to keep going. And I know it would be much shorter with, with the terpenoid, but I just wanted to keep going this way. And like I said, so far, so good. She is very light. Even with all those layers, her skin is still very, very light, but it looks okay. It looks right. It doesn't look too textured. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like a crayon to me. I was really excited. So the trick is with crayons, super light layers, many different layers, many different colors, and blend like crazy. Oh, you can see the two different sides of the face, how much nicer the right side looks at this point. So I just kept on going and blended everything. So I hope you like this video. That's just about it. I'm gonna keep going until all of her skin is blended. And then for the next video uh, for Zodiac Girl, I'm going to use the same set of crayons and some Crayola colored pencils also. And I'm going to do her hair. I, I didn't want to use any pencils except for the blender on, on her skin just to see if I could actually do it. But for the hair, I'm definitely going to give myself the opportunity to use the pencils just because the hair strands I think would be next to impossible to create without using those pencils. I'm a little nervous because I know how hard it is to go over the top of these crayons. So we're gonna see. And I'm also gonna use Turpinoid on the hair. So thanks for sticking with me in this video and let me know what you think of it. Um, if you ever use crayons for anything, and uh, if you ever would, I just, I'm, I'm so excited that you could literally have this much fun and color with barely any color supplies other than for what your kids might have or your grandchildren and have it come out so pretty. And it's probably, what is, it's probably under $10. So I'm going to put all the links about everything that I talked about, the pencils, the turpenoid, the blending stick, the sharpener, the cume sharpener, even the colored pencils. Oh, and that brush too that I've been using throughout this whole thing. That really comes in handy. Um, I don't think I erased anything, but I'll put a whole bunch of things any, underneath anyway. Um, my coloring books, anything that you might have seen on this video. Up here, see, I'm getting darker and darker and just touching up some things even after I blended. Once again, if you don't like the way it looks, you're probably not done. So stay tuned next time where we will be doing Zodiac Girl's hair. And then for the next video where we'll be doing the background and the flowers. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being with me. I hope you give me a like, maybe a share. 
And I hope you leave me a comment because my favorite thing is when you guys chat with me. So I will talk to you all soon. Hope you're all well and see you soon. Bye.